Hi, and welcome to the MacGuffin Podcast. Uh, we're here with another one of our top fives. I'm Ed. And I'm Alan. And today we're going to talk about our top five movie scores. Mm-hmm. We're not talking necessarily movie songs. We're talking, you know, we're soundtracks. We're talking the score, the, mm-hmm. mov- the music you hear behind the scenes. Yeah. You want to go first? Um, sure. Let's go ahead and start uh, with my number five score. Um, my number five score is from a Western. Uh, it was... Uh, made by Ennio Morricone, and the film is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I was like, you know, I've mentioned this film often a couple times, I've written about it, but when it comes to movie scores, I had to put it. I mean, when you, for, for me, when I think of a Western, I think of that, that uh, music in my head. It fits so perfectly well in, in the story of, you know, man versus man, bad guy versus bad guy, all trying to get this gold. and. It's one of those scores that just kind of sticks with you. It, you have that one score where it's like, Ba-na-na-na, you know, it just blasts you right in the beginning. Like, the opening credits, the score nails you right right there. And then move on to the end with the uh, ecstasy of gold. And then all the way up to the part where they have the standoff. It's interesting to think that that final uh, shootout was just them staring at each other. But it was so intense, all because of the score. And that's what makes it so great. No arguments. You're one of the best scores ever. Yes. Yeah. Totally. All right. Well, my number five. <laughs> we got a a, a, a plethora of Ennio Morricone here because <laughs> I went with another one, a, a non-Western. Uh, my number five is The Untouchables. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I um, the that soundtrack is probably I've probably listened to that one more than any other soundtrack ever. I've just listened to that over and over. I think. Everything about it. There's a uh, the scene where they're um, riding the horses to meet the Canadian Mounties on the bridge. Mm-hmm. That I think it's called the Triumph of the Willing or the way, and it, it soars. It, it's a soaring score. And then you've got that that march that's really fantastic. And then there's that high pitched violin during the famous uh, baby buggy scene down the oh, down yeah. the yeah. stairs, where it's just the slight offsetting. Mm-hmm. Oh. It's, Oh yeah, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, so we, yeah, I, I I could I could have gone with a lot of Andrew Morricone. He's, He's just the one. I've, just a really diverse one of the all time greats. Yeah, goes from westerns to you know dramas to horror movies. The guy the guy's awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to number four. Uh, my number four musical score. We could not have made uh, a top five musical score without mentioning John Williams. Uh, John Williams is one of the great composers of all time. Classic score after classic score. We I could mean, make a top five John we Williams. We really could we make, make a top, top ten. Five. John yeah, Williams. top ten, top five, top fifteen John yeah. Williams scores. Um, there are so many to pick from. Uh, Star Wars, blah blah blah. You know, moving on. Uh, the one I decided to go with uh, was his score to Jaws. Mm. Very mm. simple, very mm. quiet. Mm. Just a few notes, but it builds up the tension in, in that movie so incredibly well uh, I mean when you add his score to the kind of point of view shot of the shark moving up to his prey oh man it's just the the suspense is just so intense and the it just builds and builds and builds and you're like oh my god please you know uh, you're just screaming for the person to get away but it just it's it, I mean I can't even I'm at a loss for words how much suspense it's so can good. be wrung out of a yellow bucket <laughs> Or your exactly. yellow barrel, I mean. Yeah. Exactly. We've got to get a bigger podcast. <laughs> so on to our number four, my number four, I'm uh, going to go more recent with Howard Shore's score for, take your pick of the Lord of the Rings movies. <laughs> he did them all. They were all great. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll say the first one just to make it simple, but really the whole the whole damn thing, the, all three movies, awesome, awesome, awesome. Memorable score, everything from the, 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 the fun, quiet, happy... Uh, Shire theme mm-hmm. to the sweeping battle scenes to the I, you know the the overall theme you've got it going in your head already don't you I can I know it <laughs> it's it, it it is it is memorable as hell mm-hmm. yeah you're you're absolutely right and you touch on a good point that you know wherever you are um, in Middle Earth he has kind of a score a, for a that for, yeah. for that area and it's I mean you have a huge epic probably one of the biggest epics of all time and it needs something just as sweeping, just as big, um, while at the same time being intimate and small uh, in certain points. Uh, and yeah, you're absolutely right. So Yeah, it, I, I can't say enough about another one I've listened to mm-hmm. constantly. Yep. Okay, um, let's move on to my number three. Uh, my number three score is from another composer who is really, really big, Mr. Bernard Herrmann. Um, 
what again Bernard could Herrmann do a top so, 10. Many, so many scores that I could choose from I mean yep. he made the score for my favorite all time film Taxi Driver and the stuff that he did with Hitchcock I mean you could choose just about anything they did yeah um I was thinking about doing Psycho, but I decided not to go there. I decided to go with his other score, and it was the score to Vertigo. Um, the beautiful thing about that score, it's it has this sort of like really soft, kind of like lovely, romantic feel to it. But at the same time, there's an air of mystery. Uh, there's an air of danger and the unknown, and I, it fits perfectly well into this story of mistaken identity and, and lies and deceit and backstabbing and loss of love and rejection and tragedy. It's just, and, it fits all those things all together at the exact same time. And it's another one of those scores where the, the images are stuck with the sound, like like Jimmy Stewart's head with a spiral around it. Yeah, oh yeah. You've got the soundtrack in your head while you're watching and mm -hmm. seeing that. Yeah. Totally. I, another great pick on your part. Yep. On my part, I'm going to go with another classic. <clears throat> um, the uh, The Third Man. Ah, with the zither mu yes. the incredible zither mu music played by Anton Karras. Dang it, I should have put that one. Uh, it's, it, it, yeah. it, one of the reasons I love The Third Man so much is because there is everything about it is innovative, including the score. I remember mm. the first time going, my god, this, is, this music isn't anything like anything else I've quite heard in a movie like this. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it, it, it's, it's not a huge orchestra or anything no, like that. It's no, that, it's that it, it feels European, but it feels noirish at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's fantastic. Yeah, it sort of has this weird thing where you would assume like that it would go against the story, but at the it, same time, it, it but it enhances it and actually makes it better and makes it more memorable. Right, right? it's quite quite the feat. Um, yeah, you know. I, I yeah, it's a, I I think it's one of the great one of the all time greats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. I'm a little disappointed that I didn't choose that one because I love that freaking movie. No, we got coverage. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> all right, let's move on to my number two score. Um, my number two score it was made by Nino Rota. It is the Godfather score. And I'm thank God you put this on here because I just I on another day I would have put it on mine too. Yeah, I mean God, the Godfather score is so memorable. Yeah. I mean it just absolutely fits everything about it. It has this epic feel to it. It has this sort of grandeur and romanticism about it. It fits perfectly within this world of um, rules and but it rules and violence at the same time. It's it's classy yet dangerous. It's so, so amazing. Once you hear that score, you will never forget it for your entire life. I bet you anything. It's, he's making a score you can't refuse. <laughs> yes. It's beautiful, beautiful. Yes. All right, um, <clears throat> on to my number two. Um, uh, another one of those that I could probably do a top ten on by himself, Maurice Jar, mm. Jar, Jarre, Jar. I think it's Jar. Anyway, his score for Lawrence of Arabia. Oh, another one yeah. of the all time. You want to talk about scope and sweeping, uh, epic feel? I mean, the movie's over four hours long, and the score helps carry you through that th that length of time. And, and even we we also think of the big, you know, the big theme. It's played by orchestras everywhere, but there's also even the the small part. Like one of the greatest transitions in film is when he blows out the match and they they cut right to the sunset. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a beat, a, a big bass beat yeah. that go, accompanies it. Yeah, that's br I mean, that, mm -hmm. that, it's incredible to just punctuate that with the score. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and but even then, and then also again the the the, the roaring epic feel of that of that march. That mm -hmm. it plays throughout. Yeah, I mean, it's that that film would not work without the the score, most definitely. It's interesting to think that you know, a lot of times movies are better without any music, but here with these films, it's like it it makes it makes them better with music. So. Totally. All right, moving on to my number one uh, movie score. Um, this one was the one that came first to mind when uh, making this list. It's by Mr. Charlie Chaplin, and it is his score to Modern Times, um, more known today as the Smile song. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a romantic at heart, so I had to choose this. It's just such a, a lovely, lovely, beautiful, amazingly well put together uh, score that fits so perfectly well uh, with that film. Charlie Chaplin, Charlie Chaplin, was a freaking genius. I mean, he wrote, he directed, he acted, and he scored his films, produced them. I mean, the man did everything. And then when you add the lyrics to that song, it's just 
it's so beautiful. I mean, even he, today, he, now, he, uh, people are singing that song still. He used it as his theme song later in life, too, didn't he? I, oh. I believe he used it in like some award shows and stuff. Yeah, I'm sure. And I mean, even Michael Jackson mentioned that it was his favorite song of all time. And, and Modern Times is my favorite Chaplin movie. Oh, it's definitely up there with me, too. It's a great, great music, great film. Uh, it's you got to smile. You just have to smile. <laughs> All right. Well, on to my number one. You mentioned him before. I'll mention him again, Mr. John Williams. Mm -hmm. Problem is, I, I I feel like I have to cheat because five minutes ago I would have said <laughs> Star Wars. Right uh -huh. now I would say Indiana Jones. Yeah. But then I would go back to Star Wars. <laughs> then I would go to Indiana. Damn it! I'm, I'm I'm like Chinatown over here with the Indy Star Wars. <laughs> Indy Star Wars. So I put them both. <laughs> Hell with it. Screw it. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, Star Wars, you know, it's got multiple great themes. You've got, you know, the Rebel theme, mm -hmm. the, the Empire theme. Indiana Jones, you know, one of the greatest themes of all time. Mm -hmm. you, you know, again, in your head already, isn't it? Yeah. And then all the, the, the music when they, when they open the arc finally. And the, John Williams, one of, one of the best of all time. Dude. It's amazing. I mean, he will, when you think of like classic composers of the days, the Beethovens, blah, blah, blah. I mean, John Williams should definitely be up there. Yeah. You know? So, okay. That does it for our top five musical scores. There are so many out there. We, there's a ton we did, we didn't mention still because it's only five we could mention. Yeah, but I mean there were a few six. that I wanted to mention like recently that I couldn't fit into this. So yeah. if there's any that you'd like to mention, any we're gonna John get Williams blasted. that you want to mention. People are gonna yell at us about no Danny Elfman on these lists. I I agree with you. What are you gonna do? I mean you, we can only fit five. So <laughs> let it be known at MacGuffinPodcast.com, and we will see you guys next time.